Welcome to an alternate hue. I'm Hugh Anderson, and this is some of what caught my attention this week. Let's take a look at that last segment again, shall we? As we get swamped with 2021 outlooks for the economy, fashion, food trends, and oh yes, the stock market, let's keep in mind one thing. Wall Street wants you invested. They need you invested. Recall that the outlook is never for a down year. Yes, the market tends to rise approximately 70% of the time, but that means 30% of the time it does retreat. So as the tsunami of market forecasts wash over us in the coming weeks, let's recognize them for what they truly are, guesses. Instead of focusing just on the 12 months of 2021, let's focus on the longer term, where real money is made for most investors. Here's a sobering look at the market outlook from one of the best forecasters in the business, GMO, an institutional investment firm. They don't pretend to know what the next 12 months holds, but their seven-year outlooks have had uncanny accuracy in years past. As you can see, the pickings are slim for robust returns in most asset categories. As the stock market has acted more like a video game of late, it's always good to revisit the true cost of a short-term mindset. It's the rare individual indeed who can outsmart Mr. Market in the very short term. So let's tune out all of the 2021 stock market guesses and remember Dunning-Kruger. And let's move on. Creeping cryptos, Batman. Despite skeptics who continue to view cryptocurrencies as a fad, Bitcoin continues to grow in value relative to more established global currencies. Whether Bitcoin will ever become a true currency or just a store of value remains to be seen, but this chart shows its shadow is growing longer. Still think it's a fad? To be filed in the blowing in the wind section, Mr. Dillon, Bob to his friends, took a lot of heat for going electric at the Newport Folk Festival. By the way, he's the one on the left in the very cool Yoko Ono sunglasses. Thankfully, the festival controversy didn't kill his career, and he'll live in comfort for the duration. It was recently announced he sold his music catalog for between three and $400 million. So let's do the math. First, he's probably paying at least 37% income tax on his royalty income. The sale of the catalog qualifies for long-term capital gains treatment of 20%. Nice. All you painters, filmmakers, and video game developers need not apply. This arbitrage is not available to you. The corporate buyer, Universal Music Publishing, benefits from the 21% corporate income tax rate and the ability to deduct state income taxes they may pay. You gotta love it. It's no secret that technology stocks have been on a roll for a long time. Thank you, Captain Obvious. And this guy doesn't even look like Captain Obvious. And that's obvious. These charts offer a glimpse of investor enthusiasm for all things high tech. The first chart shows a certain tech-oriented exchange-traded fund whose growth has dwarfed the returns of the stock market of late. The following chart shows the growth in assets of that particular exchange-traded fund. As assets come in the fund, it's obligated to buy more shares of the stocks in the fund. As the stocks continue to rise, more dollars come into the fund, which requires more buying. Do you see the pattern here? This particular fund has seen its assets grow from $2 billion at, at the beginning of the year to $18 billion currently. I just have one question. What happens when she gets tired of chasing her tail? This is America? Anyone who's read any American economic history at all will recognize that an economy at any given point in time affects various segments of society differently. This chart shows the percent of people suffering from food insecurity, a nice phrase to help soften the image of hunger. So let's skip the niceties and call it what it is, hunger. I just finished reading Hard Times by Studs Terkel, great author's name, right? It was a compilation of first-hand recollections of people who endured the Great Depression. The variety of experience was astounding. From those enduring extreme poverty and want to those who weren't quite aware there was anything wrong in the economy. The common theme between the two eras was, if you had a job and or assets, you probably did okay. If you didn't, you were in a world of hurt. 
In America, in 2020, let's recognize that the pandemic has thrown a major portion of our population into nothing short of a depression. Beware the Moors and surgeons on their birthday. That's because there's a noticeable increase in patient deaths after surgeons perform an operation on their birthday, according to research published last week in the British Medical Journal. Whether it's because they're distracted by upcoming evening celebrations or just mad they have to work on their birthday, doctors lost significantly more patients after a birthday surgery than average, even more so than on holidays. Oh, good. Facebook is working on a device to read your brain. That's right. Facebook might be one of the last companies you want reading your mind, but that won't stop the social media giant from trying. In a leaked company meeting on Tuesday, Facebook Chief Technology Officer Mike Schofer highlighted recent progress on the company's neural interface tech, BuzzFeed News reported. The ultimate goal, ostensibly, isn't to harvest our thoughts as yet, another form of personal data, but rather to give people the ability to control software with their thoughts. That's it for this week of An Alternate Hue. I'm Hugh Anderson, and remember, 21 is a lucky number in Las Vegas, so here's hoping your 2021 is prosperous, healthy, and happy for you and your family. Until next time.